This video is supported by Rocket Railways for all your model railway needs. Please check the link in the description below. Okay, let's get this box finished off. Uh, the first thing I want to look at, I think, is the stairs. It's probably the most complicated of the aspects in this section of the build. Now there's a couple of options for this. There seems to have been two different types of steps used on this box in the, f the past. One being uh, a galvanized uh, metal sort of thing and the other a precast concrete set of steps. And it's the precast concrete that I'm going to use. And if you wanted to opt for the, the galvanized version, the ratio, the ratio signal box steps kit would work absolutely perfectly for this. Now, my intention originally was with this was to create some form of scratch built steps and I bought some materials to do it, uh, but it's only upon playing around with those materials that I've kind of discovered that really it just doesn't work. So my backup option for that is uh, rating the scraps box essentially. This section of stairs will work absolutely perfectly. So if I rather unceremoniously take this thing apart, we're left with the staircase from the old Airfix uh, footbridge kit, and that's going to work absolutely perfectly. Now, one thing I want to make sure is that this will be the outer edge, because this has got the nice straight edge to it. If you look underneath, once we cut that, we're going to see a serrated edge to the the other side which can go up against the wall but want this nice sharp edge for uh, view, uh, for viewing. So if I measure in from the left and I want to make it a probably about 12 mil in width. Now you either use a Stanley blade and just run repeated passes over this until it cuts through or you could take a uh, a saw and cut it that way. Either way, you just want to make sure that your measurements are pretty good before before you start making your cut. With the staircase now cut, hopefully you can see we've got a nice sharp edge along the outside edge in which you want. And what I was referring to on the other side is this serrated edge, which wouldn't look just as nice to view. So that will go up against the wall like so. So what we need to do now is to create a little lay or platform base to come out from the door before the person would turn to go down the stairs. And for that we will use one millimeter thick plain plastic card. Now I've already cut this to size and it's ready to glue. So it's basically lay it on the ground, take some uh, plastic card or, or plastic weld and then if we turn the steps upside down as well and we're trying to basically use the top step lay it flat on the ground and bring it up with our bit of plain plastic and then we can run our line of plastic weld along with that so while that's now in place and has been adjusted can just run another little run of plastic weld over the top and then we'll leave that to dry off completely. With the steps all glued it's time to move on to the handrails and as you can see here I've sort of leapt on ahead and done an awful lot of it off camera. Really it's because it was such fiddly work I, I don't honestly think there would have been much merit in putting it on the video as it would have been very difficult to show because it's all sort of fingers and thumbs with this but hopefully I can talk you through it. Initially there has been a hole, a pilot hole drilled here, here, here and here for the post to go into. That's a 0.8mm drill bit because what we're using is 0.8mm round rod from Plastruct. This post, this one and this one are all cut to 12mm lengths and glued into place either using super glue or the plastic, plast, plasti whip. The plasti weld. Once those have gone off, the other section, which is basically the handrail and this post here, is all one piece. And the plast rod, the plast, the plast truck rod is very pliable. And just with a little bit of manipulation, 
you can bend it to shape and that's all I've done in this case here bend it to the point where it looks just about right and I've started at the bottom here by gluing in the post at the bottom bending it around about the 12 mil mark ready to go upwards it's then been glued here with plastruct sorry glued with plasti weld and then again at the top point and then at the corner and each of those points has all been bent and curved before I've started the actual gluing process and that's then been left a full uh, 24 hours to give it plenty of time to really cure and this last section here will be glued to the end wall of the building once the whole st set of steps gets glued into place. Now it does, there is another bar to put in between working all the way up and those are just going to be similar cut lengths of plastruct and they're glued into place. Slight angle on each end of it just in order that you can get a good surface uh, contact between both sections of plastruct but again I'll do that off camera because it is rather fiddly to be working at. Before we paint up the staircase there's a few other components that we can look at and get painted at the same time. Um, first of all we have two lighting boxes that sit beneath each of the two windows here. Uh, now they look to be of some sort of uh, box, wooden box structure but what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep it simple and I'll use two, mil two millimeter square rod and we'll cut those to 30 millimeter lengths. Uh, two of those and we we'll, can just paint and glue them into place. I think that will suffice to give the impression that there is something there. So I'll cut those and do them to length. There is also a pipe that runs uh, out of the wall and down to the ground here and also again on the left hand side. They're both fairly similar. The one on the left looks like it may be an outflow pipe from the toilet the one at the front I'm not 100% sure on but it must be some sort of waste pipe of some description. Now for that I'm going to use one millimeter florist wire. Now this florist wire can be picked up at as you can imagine any garden centre or DIY store should sell those sort of things too and essentially what I want to do is we're roughly going to go to about that length on it so if I pinch my finger there and then take my pliers and just bend it off square and you can check the squareness of that by using it onto your cutting mat to see if you do need to do anything more. It won't matter if it's too much out but the square the better and then with a pair of pliers we can just cut the end off that. Now we don't want too much length on this because I think height wise where it's going it may well come in through the wall into the, the, the signal box upstairs. So if we keep it short essentially no longer than the thickness of your card and plastic card um, of that wall. So if I use the pliers I can snip some of that off and it'll just be enough that whenever it's painted well, in actual fact what I've forgotten to do is to cut it. Um, I'll need to cut a length too so we'll cut that as well. And then once painted uh, we will drill a hole in the wall on this front side and then on also on this, the, the side of the building in which the little section will set into with a drop of super glue and that will give us a nice pipe, bit of pipe work. Moving on, we also have a lot of cable trunking that runs along the side of the wall. It runs up to lighting that sits above the door here and also to look what looks like an outdoor socket on this wall here and then also runs across to this side here. And for that I'm just going to use more florist wire. Uh, this particular wire here is 0.3 millimetres in, th uh, in diameter. Uh, and should work quite well. I'm not going to do anything with that at the minute. What I'll do is I'll prime that up and paint it into some sort of you know aluminium galvanized sort of finish that um, cable trunking would have appear in and then once that's done I can bend and cut to shape um, whenever it's ready for installation but it's just another of those things that needs prepped and ready to go. 
on the other side we have a downspout that runs the height of the wall here so let me sh I, i've done a video uh, on creating your own downspouts to, but let me just show you a quick recap of that hopefully here with downspouting we return to our one millimeter florist wire and we're going to use that to create the actual spout itself now it will need a little bit of a kink so i tend to uh, overscale it to the st to start with and then i can trim at the bottom afterwards but what i'm looking to do is to create that nice angle that you get on spouts whenever they are come away from the wall to reach their guttering on the upper sides so we take two bends essentially of that using our pliers and we're left with that kink on the upper side we'll trim most of the length off to just leave a small amount that would uh, extend up to your guttering and then on the bottom side then we obviously need to measure on the bottom side as to how far down to cut it so we'll cut it just slightly above the wall or the base of the wall should I say and that essentially can become your your downspout now you can go that little bit further and add some brackets by using some fuse wire let me show you that now now this is 16 to gauge wire it's the same stuff that I would use for my droppers and by cutting off your um, protective sheath you can get individual strands such as this and if I take one of those strands and I wrap it round my downspout a couple of times And just sort of crimp it right in so that's nice and tight you can then meet at the back with the rest of it and just give it a twist until it holds into place and then with a very tiny drop of super glue just dab a dry drop of glue onto your spouting do about three of them one at the base one at the top and another one in the middle and keep these little projected bits out the side because once we go to fit it we can drill a small hole in the wall in each of the three locations in which the wire then can be fed in and it just helps to add, um, hold the the, um, the spout to the building uh, to give it a little bit more purchase so I'll carry on and I'll make the other two sections for this and then that plus all the other accessories that we've done for the front can go on and get primed and painted ready for installation
ready then pieces are all painted so it's time to put them into place and we're going to start with the downspout and the downspout just runs up the length of this wall here so we'll take the roof off and I'm just going to use a wee drop of super glue on it I trimmed off the extended bits of wire felt they were just a little bit too fine to be able to um, act as any sort of purchase on the building so we'll just we'll rely on a drop of super glue on each of the three bracket points and I want to try and make sure we get this as straight as possible okay that's point one done now the little yellow pipework goes on the front of the building here and a 0.8 millimeter drill bit I'm going to drill into the wall okay and that wee splash of yellow just adds a something a little bit different to the look of the box and hopefully you can see as well putting these little bits of wire wrapped around it really does just enhance the look of that pipework now oh I've lost my downspout on the right hand side next we will take our little lighting boxes now I had glued these onto an odd bit of plastic just to make it easier to uh, work at them paint wise and it was just one tiny little blob of glue in the center so they should come away come away just with a little bit of pressure and I don't think it really matters as to what way up we put this but these are going to sit these are going to sit just beneath the cement section of the uh, the wall right about there so I'll need to put those two on there and again just with a small amount of glue on each Now that's already looking much different from the plain wall that was there before. Now finally we have everything on this side here which is probably the most complicated part of it all. First off we'll get the steps on and they will just set up nicely on there. So I'll file back the this side here just to make sure we've got as little paint on as possible just to help with the contact of the piece to the wall and then our little pieces of wire here also need to be super glued into place so we'll need a cocktail stick just to add a wee touch to the end of them now next this pipe here is much the same as the one at the front so we need to drill a little hole for it but also what we'll need to do is because the uh, step is in the way realistically the step should sit slightly off the wall but I would rather have it against the wall to allow it to have plenty of purchase uh, for the glue so rather than setting it outside slightly we'll cut a little bit of this wire and take it to the step and then we can bring the other wee bit of off cut of wire in underneath the step here so if I cut a bit first that's okay all right and that gives a nice wee effect just of it coming down through past the steps we then have just our pieces of wire here I want to create a couple of cable lines running across so we're going to bend like so and then again bend here and up that'll be good 
and we'll cut it about here. Now we want another straight piece. And we're going to put it in along here. Okay, and just to finish off, I've got the tiniest little bit of plain plastic card cut into a square. And I'm just going to put one there. And get it straight for a start. One here. And one up here. Okay. I think that'll do in terms of additional detailing. The only thing left to do now is to give the whole box a final light weathering, just particularly around the edges and then around the uh, cement sections at the windows here. So I'll do that and that is this job done. Well that concludes another scratch build series and I really am quite pleased with how this signal box has turned out. Um, if you were interested in building this uh, box yourself, please share the results with me via Facebook or by email, both of which details can be found in the description below. Always interested in seeing what other people are doing, so feel free to drop me a line. There will of course be more scratch builds throughout the year just not entirely sure what I'm going to be working on yet. next. I do have a couple of commissions to be looking at. Whether they will feature as a scratch build, I'm not entirely sure, but I'll keep you posted. And if you're not already subscribed, please consider doing so. And if you hit that bell icon, you'll be notified as and when a video appears from myself. Okay, that's me for now. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll speak to you again soon. Bye-bye.